Hi and welcome back to the lab. Well, today here on the bench we have a ICOM IC271, which is uh, totally dead. Okay, I mean this radio is uh, almost 40 years old, so already uh, vintage. Um, but maybe it uh, is uh, just something very easy and then we can do it. But uh, if it would turn into a restoration, then uh, we really have to stop. But anyways, let's have a look and let's see if we can help. Okay, and here is our IC271 and uh, it is already connected to the power supply. And let me try to switch it in to see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It looks like as it is really completely dead. Okay, so uh, we have to crack open the radio and let's see that we get an overview and then we can decide how to go ahead. Okay, so we have our radio open and um, well that is always a good thing. We have here a fuse which is directly connected to our power switch okay so that is important of course oh, looks broken uh, let me switch my meter and let's see what we what we have okay dead okay so that is dead all right so the next what we can do is let me see um, okay come on can i get the contact here all right so let me take This guy, let's connect it to the input and let me connect ground. Okay, so now uh, let me check what happens when we switch it in. Oh wow, yeah. Okay, that is a dead short. Once again, so when I press it here now, you see it is only 1.5 ohm, which uh, shows that we really have somewhere here in our circuit um, a real problem. And uh, well, yeah, the problem is it really can be everywhere. Okay, and when we check here a little bit what what we have then I must say there is nothing obvious but what we can definitely do else is Okay, I have disconnected, uh, of course, um, the switch, but uh, from the service manual I've seen that uh, our power amplifier is directly connected to power as usual. So what we can uh, check additionally, that uh, again uh, we connect ground here to the system and uh, then we see what we have and yeah uh, okay so that uh, shows uh, 625 so that uh, seems to be okay so there is not uh, the dead short it is here definitely um, in our uh, circuit which can be as I already said everywhere on the board and the problem with uh, old radios like this you see oh 
know if you really can uh, see it. We take here an additional lamp. So uh, down down there we have here our um, power switch and uh, this little wire, the yellow wire here is what it is going here to the front panel board and uh, from here the whole distribution, the whole voltage or power distribution for the entire radio is uh, from here over this thin little yellow wire. And the problem here is that, uh, you know, um, our 13.8 volt, what uh, we are supplying our radio with, needs to go, of course, uh, to every, in, in, in a way, to every board we have here in the radio. And, uh, I mean, um, you may imagine uh, if we do not have a good documentation, it uh, really becomes um, difficult because now we need to sort out where our uh, short is. And I can tell you that is no fun simply because all the um, manuals back from the days um, which we can find on the web are not in uh, one piece, so they all are cut it in more pieces, and that makes it really, really difficult. So you see, this here is the maintenance manual for the 271 uh, A, E, and H, and we have here the H type. And when we go through, you see, it uh, just uh, starts here already with our block diagram. So it is cut it in two pieces, which is uh, not really helpful. I mean, here we have only two pieces, which um, is um, handable. Uh, but uh, then when we go here through our service manual, we get to all the diagrams and already here you can uh, see that uh, it is always cut it in two pieces and you need to follow up, uh, not to follow up, to follow um, the wiring diagram in order to see um, where are the contacts going to and uh, under normal condition you really would need um, to print it out then to cut it, then to glue it together with uh, some uh, tape in order to be able to uh, really see, and here you can really see uh, what I mean, so it is over more uh, pages it is uh, cut it, and we really would need uh, to print out all the different pages and of course uh, we need uh, to uh, cut here uh, always uh, the pieces that uh, we can uh, fit it together then we have to tape it together and then we would be able to follow all the little um, lines here all the little traces we need uh, to find uh, where is what. Yeah, so and that you you see that for it owns makes uh, it difficult to start um, something on uh, those old radios because it is really consuming time. So that is just to tell you what's behind uh, finding a foal. So sometimes the preparation to be able simply to follow uh, all the service manuals takes quite a lot of time. And uh, from this perspective, for its own, it is very often not really, it, it doesn't really make sense to start uh, a troubleshooting. But here in our case we have uh, one pro. Since we have a dead short, um, 
we uh, simply um, inject only 3 volt with 1 amp into our system in order to see um, what's uh, really happening um, in our case. So we um, take here our power supply and uh, we connect our plus 3 volt simply here um, where we had our fuse and uh, now when we um, first uh, engage here our power supply we switch it on nothing happens because let me see what uh, will happening um, when I'm switching in the radio so that is what I'm doing now ah and you see uh, our voltage is dropping and we are drawing one amp and that is clearly showing that uh, um, that is clearly showing our problem and now we uh, have another weapon to find uh, our fold and that is let's use our infrared cam because that here is a good way um, to use an infrared cam right okay we are now starting searching uh, the problem with uh, our um, infrared cam and uh, I'm going here along it's not switched on yet but I will uh, switch it on in a second but uh, uh, as, I, as you can see I've already connected here uh, my USB cable uh, to the cam so that uh, we can um, image uh, our picture here on the computer okay so let's start um, I'm gonna switch in the radio in right now okay so uh, our power supply is drawing current and I am observing here the board <laughs> funny enough you can see here the reflection from my hand so that is what you see and you can see here the uh, infrared cam so here's the cam that is what we see that is a reflection but uh, on this side as you can see uh, there is definitely no hotspot definitely nothing right only my reflection <laughs> Okay, so here is everything fine. Let me switch out that uh, we do not draw too long too much current here Yeah, that's the way how we did it and uh, the reflection came here You can see it here from uh, the shielding, right? That is what we have seen uh, even on our infrared cam, but uh, here uh, on this side uh, we definitely had no uh, hotspot uh, our a power amplifier fire is completely isolated simply because we are feeding in here our power supply um, if you like separated from our um, PA so uh, that is uh, completely out of the game and uh, when uh, something would be wrong uh, we would see something here uh, what I'm going to do now as well um, let me put it here on a table and uh, what I really want uh, to uh, double check is if something is getting hot here on uh, our front uh, PCB and that is what we are going to do right now okay so um, it gets switched on well, now it is on and it is drawing current and uh, we try to uh, see a hotspot here on the front uh, panel but as you can see there is definitely nothing so we have here again our reflection so that is what we have seen before uh, but other than that so from here to there there is definitely 
no hotspot. Okay, so now we are looking at the top side uh, and here we have uh, our main board and uh, down here uh, some other boards and uh, okay, so let me switch in our radio one second and no now it's in let let's see what we got hey what's going on there what's going on there look here there is a hot spot building up i mean 40 could uh, still fine uh, let me check 50 Okay, so that uh, is not so nice and it is still going up. So there is definitely something wrong. So we have a hot spot. Have a look. It is going up 70 degrees C. It is all degrees C by the way. Let me go here a little bit uh, closer. Oh, it's already 90. Oh, come on, let me switch it off here. Okay, okay, so we have a hot spot, and uh, that is uh, here where my probe is. Okay, let me take here our. Let it take me down. So there we have the hot spot. There it is, and let me show sh check if we can uh, see it here as well yes we still can see it um, it is going it is still 85 degrees C okay what is it it is oh yeah shit it is really hot it is really hot so that here looks like a coil and that reminds me that uh, these radios have a funny voltage regulator i believe uh, the voltage regulator is um, down here okay so let us have a look into our schematic wow wow it is still hot it is still hot okay let's go over and uh, see what uh, our service manual is telling us okay it has really taken a while until i found it uh, where we are so let me enlarge here our manual and uh, wow look at this look at this so here is our L17 and that is a coil which uh, we found um, where we found uh, our hotspot and uh, you see that obviously our IC15 so that is uh, the voltage voltage uh, regulator what I had in mind so I'm not entirely sure if really the voltage uh, regulator is dead or if you are lucky it is uh, only this 470 microfarad electrolytic uh, capacitor which uh, would really be good news since uh, the MB3756 uh, is uh, you know um, an obsolete uh, part and uh, you can get uh, those parts from Shiner um, but uh, you never know what you get so originally uh, it is uh, obsolete and that means yes we have a problem okay so we, how do we go ahead so if we follow along here um, our line our wire or trace so you see it uh, comes from 13.8 volt in so that uh, is our supply voltage from uh, our power supply and uh, it is a connector J2 so what happens if we disconnect uh, this um, J2 uh, do we have then still our problem or not okay our um, 
connector J2 is uh, down there. Let me see if we can read it. Yes, there. That is our J2, which uh, is uh, obviously supplying uh, one portion of the board and uh, our um, voltage regulator and uh, here our voltage comes over the L17 which uh, we have seen getting very very hot over 100 degrees C. Um, so now once again if uh, I switch in the radio so let me switch in the radio so you see it is really really uh, drawing uh, our current so I've switched it uh, off now what uh, we are going to do is um, we simply um, pull off let me see that we do not damage anything so we pull off here our connector that is here okay now we do exactly uh, the same we switch the radio in aha and you see really our uh, current drone is gone so the short is gone simply because um, we have uh, disconnected here our supply uh, line and that means okay our short is definitely on this uh, board and uh, as I said if we are lucky it might be only here this uh, capacitor but very often these uh, voltage regulators are dying and as I said that is an obsolete part remember our radio is approximately 40 years old so that is vintage and uh, if we can get uh, some of this voltage regulators then uh, we need to order it in Asia and that means uh, we do not have any guarantee that it will work. Okay, And uh, to prove what uh, we found so I figured that it is here our uh, gray wire which uh, is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is a six connector. So when I go to ground, you hear it is beeping. And now six, uh, six pin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here we have it. So that is our short, okay. So that is proving that uh, we are really on the right path. Okay, so that means um, we definitely have to take out here our main board and uh, we need to, to investigate a little bit more um, what uh, we can find. Is it really our, um, our voltage regulator or uh, possibly our capacitor. Let's see. Okay, so the board is out, uh, but unfortunately uh, there is definitely nothing obvious, so I really need uh, to dig um, a little bit uh, deeper, and that means uh, I really need uh, to take out... Uh, I, I think I start here um, with the coil and the capacitor uh, in order to see um, what the outcome is and uh, then we can decide how to go ahead. As you can see I have our L17 uh, out of the circuit and uh, when I test it um, the value is uh, one point, uh, approximately 1.4 milli uh, Henry, which uh, is that what uh, you find uh, in the manual, so very close, uh, in the manual we see 1.5, so that is fine. But more important is uh, our ringer test, in order to um, evaluate if there is um, a short in the winding, right? So that is very, very important, so let's go and check for ringer. 
and we have 76 rings and that is good so now there is uh, now with this test it is sure that uh, we uh, have no short inside our little coil and that means it is totally fine no problem whatsoever Okay, and of course we need to check here our capacitor which uh, we have taken out as well and uh, that is a 470 microfarad type let's uh, check the value and you see 463 that is good uh, important is now is there a leakage it is a 16 volt type so let's uh, test for leakage um, so already good uh, 261 and it is falling but uh, as you can see our um, our analyzer is uh, telling that uh, it is good so no problem no leakage everything fine uh, the ESR let us check the ESR is point zero six it was now it is coming up a little bit but uh, it is uh, still good uh, so no problem so what we can say is that uh, our capacitor here is not the problem okay so what does it mean on the, um, we have most likely a dead voltage regulator but uh, we are gonna test it <coughs> according to our service manual um, pin 2 is um, what is connected to 13.8 volt so therefore we check here our our IC our regulator uh, one hand to ground and the other to pin 2 let me switch to continuity okay uh, yeah pin 2 1 2 and ground no here one two there that is pin one two pin two and ground yeah so that is the proof uh, we have a faulty regulator and uh, well yes that means um, it uh, is getting now very complicated as as I already said it is hard to find an original time well, maybe we are lucky. So, as you can see, um, here is our voltage regulator. I've taken it out and, uh, well, on uh, pin uh, 4 uh, we have uh, regular uh, ground. And uh, remember when we tested it in circuit, uh, we um, had a short between uh, 2 and ground. And uh, now uh, I've connected uh, here my agilent and uh, okay so when I short it you hear that uh, it is beeping okay so once again when uh, we put it here on four bows and it is uh, beeping but when I put it here on two that means that uh, wow that means definitely um, that uh, it is not shorted so maybe we are really lucky and it is not our um, power, uh, voltage regulator it is much more another uh, component on our main board which uh, is shorted out and of course um, we have more than only here our uh, uh, voltage regulator on our 13.8 volt line which is coming in um, so you know maybe uh, we need uh, to investigate a little bit more our main board okay so uh, you see I've here prepared the board and uh, I have uh, soldered some little wires uh, to um, our if you like pin 2 where our voltage regulator was um, um, sitting and uh, okay so that is now connected uh, with uh, the power supply 
and uh, you see I've set it to 5 volt and 4 amps um, because I really just want to look if we can find here a little bit more and I have here uh, installed my little FLIR simply uh, because uh, I needed it to put it here over uh, our circuit so that is a nice uh, installation uh, to be able to observe it and uh, now let me um, prepare everything and then let's see if we find another hotspot. Okay, so I hope um, this will work out. So now let me uh, switch in my um, power supply, which I do right now. And yes, it is uh, drawing 4 amps. And now let's uh, see if uh, we have here somewhere... Oh, okay, something is already happening on the board. You can uh, see it down here. Okay, and I believe it is... Here is nothing, so that is only uh, the wiring, but look here. Look here, something is coming up here. So that is a hotspot, even so um, there we have... Yeah, that is, but that is only the wiring. So you can see here so that uh, is our wire where we have connected uh, the voltage to our board but here there and now ah okay now you see it's going up on uh, 38 so that is almost 40 volt so let me switch it uh, off but I think that yes yes we have another hotspot so over there so let me see what that is ah wow that here is our hotspot so that is another capacitor is it really that one yes it is that that capacitor here is uh, getting hot and it is still hot it is still hot so uh, have a look here to our power supply you see it is drawing almost 4 amps and the voltage dropped and uh, now once again here look where it is coming up our hotspot so once again that here is only wiring and you see the little wire getting hot but this here that must be the real problem it could be that we have really here a shorted, a shorted uh, capacitor. Okay, so I've put a bit um, freezer spray to the capacitor, which is uh, down there. I hope you can uh, see here my pointer. So there is a capacitor, and you see that uh, it is almost uh, it is 19 degrees showing up and uh, there where we had the wiring uh, I put a little freezer spray as well but I'm uh, interested really in our capacitor and now once again let me switch on the current and let's see what's happening what is happening and yeah you see the capacitor is coming up yes the capacitor is slowly coming up and uh, really starts glowing yes it is obviously our capacitor definitely it is our capacitor that is interesting look look at this and now you see that uh, the temperature is uh, increasing more and more there is he there is oops and now <laughs> my camera is frozen unbelievable okay problem solved and again here our hot glowing 
capacitor so you see that uh, the temperature is getting up more and more it is already 37 uh, degree our hot spot and again so now when I point to it so here is my pointer and let me switch off my power supply and let me show where I have the pointer so I've put some tape over it to reduce all the uh, reflection and that capacitor here is glowing so let me simply take that out and let me check um, let me check what's uh, really going on with uh, this capacitor okay so here is our capacitor right out of our circuit and let's check <laughs> here we have the bastard yeah that capacitor is shorted and that was a problem so my only hope is of course now that uh, our voltage regulator is still working so okay so I have to replace of course our faulty capacitor and that is exactly the same type uh, which we have tested before so you know this one was fine no problem and uh, that is the second one and the problem with uh, those shorts so you see how long how long it can take until they heat up um, and uh, showing really up on uh, the thermal uh, imager so you know it really takes a little uh, time and you have seen I needed to put four amps into it to uh, get it uh, heated in a way that uh, we was uh, clearly able to identify where our wrong um, component our faulty com component is but now we have it let me swap it out everything and then let me put back here our IC and let's see if then our radio will work again and now we replace of course uh, the faulty capacitors or I, I replace both because the other one is out already uh, but now we are going uh, to use uh, 105 degree types so that uh, we okay so as you can see everything is back in place so we can start testing okay so the very first we can do we can uh, check for short as we have done it before so we switch our unit in and of course uh, now we just check okay it's beeping so let's see if it is still beeping when we go now to ground no very good very very good now next is let's replace here our fuse the new fuse is in and now oh, we can already go and start testing and checking if it is working or not okay everything ready for testing so let us check if it works power oh okay radio is on I can operate it off obviously FM okay I can switch it but what's going on here where is our tone nothing volume AF gain is here no AF gain ah come on come on yeah that is what I meant when I said okay this old vintage radios um, are rabbit holes right so 
you see we have um, it back working but we have definitely no audio and uh, yeah so question is does it make sense to go ahead or not okay so our speaker is connected everything is right so far but we have definitely we have definitely no I AF nothing dead oh come on well and I've uh, poked a little bit around and uh, here right uh, no this one right in front of our power amplifier AF amplifier so here that is our AF amplifier and uh, this here is uh, the ICZAN829 uh, which uh, is a dual attenuator which is in front of our amplifier okay and I found that uh, we do not get voltage here at uh, this uh, guy the problem is it is not um, that uh, the uh, IC itself has a problem it is again another short which is going to ground right so when I let me let me do this here okay so again I have my beeper so you can hear it right and now uh, the voltage supply is on pin 5 pin 5 is here how much do you hear another beep and because we have two attenuators uh, in this package here on uh, 12 that is the second uh, supply and you hear the same so we have a short to ground and well you know I believe it is another capacitor and um, well we have uh, swapped out uh, this little guy here so that is a new one but as uh, it is normal we have a lot of capacitors around our um, audio amplifier which is uh, this uh, TDA okay and we all know a 40 years 40 years old um, radio uh, really have a lot of bad capacitors so normally we really would need to change every single electrolytic capacitor to be able to start from a point zero right but now it is exactly what I always say so you start and try to repair but you end up in a restoration and that is the issue okay what I'm doing now is um, I have again uh, 5 uh, volt and when I short it to ground which I do now so you see 3 amps uh, that is what uh, we have and I go now exactly down to uh, pin 5 of our IC which is here right and of course I have now the short okay so now let me see can we get it all into picture or not uh, most likely not really but let me try it I go down here okay and you see the capacitor can you see the capacitor down there it is increasing uh, temperature so it is already on 42 and you see it starts glowing more and more and now I'm taking off here our short I go with my which one is it this here this is our guy 
which uh, is doing trouble. Okay, look here. It is again another capacitor. So, okay, what I do? It is really now the last guy I'm uh, swapping out. I know that we really should do all, but uh, as I said, that is a restoration and uh, I don't do restorations because you work two weeks on a, on a unit and uh, that is not uh, what I'm doing here. But okay, so we have started it and um, I really was not convinced doing it. But anyways, we have started it. This capacitor is faulty as well. That will be that uh, it that will be now the next. I'm gonna swap it out and let's see what that means. All right, so you see. Our uh, capacitor is uh, out, so it uh, was sitting here. Here uh, is our capacitor, which I've taken out. Now let's uh, test our capacitor here. And yeah, short. Okay, short. Let me swap this guy out. It is again a 470 microfarad type and let's see what that does. All right, so a new capacitor is in here and uh, what we can do first, again, um, if I put it here to ground, you hear our beeper and pin five, pin five, seven, six, five, here is pin five and short is gone, definitely. Okay, so that means Let's test the whole unit. All right, everything is prepared for doing our next test. So let's start and let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have static, that means that uh, fault is gone. I mean, uh, we do not know whether the radio transmits, we do not know whether it receives, we do not know if every single function is working, and we do not know um, when the next old capacitor will short out. Hmm. So, what can we do? All right, so I've prepared um, everything to do a brief uh, test. I really just wanted to know if um, yeah, all uh, circuits in the radio are more or less working. So we make, uh, we do a brief uh, receive test and brief uh, transmit test. Um, I do not go deeper, um, but uh, that is uh, what I really wanted to know. So I've set here a frequency. We are on FM and let me switch in my um, tester which is already installed uh, let me see if something oh wow wow it is receiving the radio is receiving and we do have tone for sure S9 so fantastic let me check if Transmit is working and I see output power and I can regulate the output power and we have modulation. Okay. Okay. So I leave it alone. Uh, from my point of view, uh, work is uh, done. Um, I bring all back together so radio is working. You have seen that the folds we originally had are repaired and uh, I, as I said I put it together. I think it was uh, a nice uh, case uh, study to see what it means to 
repair a very, very old radio so I always um, would say if you really have an old radio what you love and I fully understand that you should really go for restoration and that is what I already said every single old electrolytic capacitor needs to get swapped out and then after that you really can start and doing a new alignment you can see uh, what is uh, working what not where do we need to um, repair something adjust something align something so then you get uh, after 40 or even 50 or 60 years you get a radio you really can work on uh, with and you can rely on here in this case um, I would not give any guarantee that not tomorrow another capacitor or what have we will fail and therefore it is always good if you love your old radio you need to do a restoration and then you have a good starting point what I've done here is not the right way because as I said next day there is a next problem so therefore I hope you understand that you will see what it is and I hope really you learned something from this because it is really really a nice uh, case study what I really love to load up to my channel uh, that everybody can see what it means and what it is okay that's it for today thanks for watching catch you next time bye